Today's video is a bit of a stretch. So bridging, specifically bridging in Cura, is still in experimental mode as it has been since it was introduced sometime in 2018, which means it's been experimental as long as many of us self-included have been printing. 2018 seems so long ago. Apparently it was also the date the Ender 3 was released. Anyway, bridging is off by default, but what is it? What does it do? Should you turn it on? And exactly how far is a bridge too far? And why am I asking questions to nobody when I obviously already know the answers? And who's the sponsor of today's video? PCBWay is, of course. Did I bridge that one well? Do you need PCBs made because making themselves is a horrible process involving all sorts of nasty chemicals? Yes, you do. Do you want multi-layer PCBs that you probably couldn't make at home? Well, I don't know because I've never made PCBs, but yes, you do. What about purple ones? Obviously. I have a project coming up which needs PCBs and I guess I need to choose a colour, so let me know in the comments which colour you would like. I'm thinking blue. Anyway, PCB Way is easy to use for ordering PCBs. You just upload the files that your design program spits out and away you go, PCBs. Thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring this video and now back to bridging. So Cura is actually quite capable of bridging gaps, which is why I guess many people don't realize that there is a separate bridging mode in the experimental section or they just forgot to use it, like happens to be a lot, and the print comes out okay, you forget to use it and it's, it's fine, or maybe they choose not to use it because, well, we haven't really got to the comparison bit yet, so is it even better anyway? Bridging just means printing on air between two points. I mean, the name is kind of self-explanatory, you're making a bridge, right? This is Cura bridging gaps in its normal mode. It does the perimeters first and then it kind of just infills with your chosen infill. That's top and bottom infill, not the other kind of infill. We do have a naming problem in 3D printing, I know. This though, it does work generally fine until it doesn't. The thing is, there are several things that could potentially improve bridging performance, and the first one is to bridge at a different speed to the rest of your print, namely slower, and using Cura's bridging settings does allow you to do this. You can also improve bridging by printing at a lower temperature, because many filaments do perform better at bridging at lower temperatures, because they are more viscous, but Cura doesn't currently support that idea, even in the experimental bridging. That would be really cool, wouldn't it? just saying. You can also vary the fan speed. I guess I'll explain that. If we check Ultimator's own documentation, we can see the fans should be at full speed while bridging. So why would you want the fans any lower? Well, I think that's an open question, but the settings guide gives this explanation, which I'll let you read yourself. The TLDR is that the default value is potentially wrong, and I've been bridging wrong in some of my tests before making this video, but oh well. I guess I'll try some side by side on that so we can hopefully see on screen now if I get a chance during editing as to whether we should be using a 0% fan on layer 2 of bridging or not. As to why you can enable multiple layers in bridging, well, this is about weight. I'll show you. When you bridge the first layer, everything looks fine, but as you add more layers, the first layer starts to sag because it's starting to hold the weight of the higher up layers. If you look at a finished part, you would never assume that the bridging was perfect until it wasn't. You would assume that that sagging had happened initially when bridging, but actually it's kind of the other way around. So to get less sagging, the idea at least, is to put more lighter layers until you have enough structural integrity to be able to print normally and to hopefully have all that cold and set so that you can print on top of it. There's a whole treasure chest of information about this bridging in the settings guide for further reading, and I do recommend reading it. If I covered all of it in this video, it would be an hour long easily. I've previously made a video about the settings guide, so go watch it if you don't know about it. So. How good is bridging, and how far can we bridge? Here's some samples of bridging on versus off. What do you think? Interestingly, at least on my config, other slicers like Prusa Slicer do use this kind of bridging by default, so they must be confident it works better. Second part of that question, how far can we bridge? Actually pretty far. Over distances up to 100 millimeters, that's 10 centimeters, the results are very acceptable in my tests. Over this length, it still works, but you start to get some collateral that you need to clean up afterwards. You, you get a few strands, basically. It's not a big deal, though. I even printed across the whole bed on the Sovel SV01 Pro, which is a 280 millimeters bed that's bigger than an Ender, and I posted it on Twitter. And then I was compelled 
to try diagonally too. I think we were hitting the limit at this point though. It didn't fail, but I don't know if it would be that useful. Actually, honestly, I think in terms of usefulness, we should probably have a rule of thumb of sticking to 10 centimeters or below, but that is way higher anyway than most people expect to be able to bridge without any support. And that is what bridging offers. It offers avoidance of support material. And actually, in some cases, you could end up with a neater result than if you used support material your mileage may vary. So I suppose we have to be able to consider when bridging is better than traditional support and what are the limits of bridging. Let's look at this model. Bridging won't work because as you can see by this failure here, you can't print curves over fresh air. Or can you? You see, it occurred to me that bridging is just about laying down a scaffold to print over, and there's no reason you can't design that scaffold in. I found it somewhat genuinely hilarious though that when I tried this, Cura doesn't seem to understand what I'm aiming for. It prints the lines in an order that it feels like, and including joining lines that don't exist yet. It just won't work. But you can help Cura to understand what you want by separating your bridging line order into layers. So what I've done is I've first put a simple bridge across on one layer in CAD, and then I've added the triangle support in the next layer, and then the full pattern above it. And Cura has to slice those lines in order now because, you know, planar slicing. And it came out pretty well considering. So the take home there, I guess, is that sometimes if you know your part is destined for FDM printing, and if you're designing it yourself, you can include some guided bridging. I'm just making names up now into the design. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. Finally, another trick that's not a trick, but I'm calling it a trick. Let me show you this part. If I printed this, it would fail because there's nothing to support this central region. This one even more so. There is a setting though in the bridging section with the catchy name Bridge Sparse Infill Max Density, which is supposed to be to stop pillowing, which is what you get when the top layer just looks like a rag draped over the support underneath, which I couldn't replicate because I guess the cooling on this printer is just too good. But what it does when you look at these parts is create a scaffold for the structure above. That is another thing to remember. If you're stuck with a part like this and you don't want to have to increase infill or whatever, you could just use this mode. Did I say finally before? There's one more thing, I guess. I thought about the example earlier and I wondered if you could use some creative CAD work to literally support bridging round corners. This is something I guess is a question really more than a demonstration. I struggled to find a solution. If we take, say, a 90 degree curve like this, I can't find a good path or way to support that. Same with a S shape. It seems like you could open a can of worms looking into what can and can't be printed with this kind of layered bridging. It feels like you could write a paper on this. And no, I'm not tempted. With the curve though, you could add some points and bridge them, couldn't you, I guess? And that's a final thought, I suppose. So that was an interesting meander around another part of Cura, which will hopefully help improve printing awkward overhanging parts. Let me know what you think, as always, in the comments, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.